Hello and welcome to your fourth stimulus package update and fourth stimulus check update. As much as it seems like there's so much going on in Congress right now, the actual progress is very little, but we do have some important information about the physical infrastructure package and the $3.5 trillion social infrastructure package, which is the one where we may get a fourth stimulus check. At least that's the expectation for now. So let's cover both and give you all the latest information here before the weekend. Just please do me a favor of hitting the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me out. Thank you so much. So let's start with what happened in the Senate. There was a vote in the Senate that passed with 67 votes, meaning 17 Republicans joined 50 Democrats to say yes, but that vote wasn't on a bill. I just want to make that clear. They voted yes to start debating and voting on the $1.2 trillion physical infrastructure package. So this is sort of the first step in moving forward with this bill so they can then move along with the $3.5 trillion bill. President Biden is happy with the deal and said, of course, neither side got everything they wanted in this deal. But that's what it means to compromise and forge consensus, the heart of democracy. As the deal goes to the entire Senate, there is still a lot of work ahead to bring this home. There will be disagreements to resolve and more compromise to forge along the way. But the bottom line is the bipartisan infrastructure package is a blue collar blueprint to rebuild America that will help make our historic economic recovery a historic long term boom. Sounds very optimistic, but it is a long road to get it done because, like I said, the vote that happened only opens the door for them to start debating and voting on the different elements of the bill. So I imagine that will take some time. But you have someone like Senator Bernie Sanders, who seems to be very optimistic, even about the $3.5 trillion deal moving forward. And he told reporters, as I understand it, next week, we're going to have 50 votes in order to pass a $3.5 trillion budget resolution. I don't know about the 50 votes, they need Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema to be on board. And there was some worry on Wednesday when Kirsten Cinema said that she doesn't support a $3.5 trillion price tag on the bill, but then she made it clear that she will support beginning this process. So if the vote next week is just another vote to start the process of debating, then maybe Cinema and Manchin will be on board with that until they get all the information in terms of what exactly is in this bill, is in that $3.5 trillion bill, and how they're going to pay for it. Two things that both of them said they really want to know. Now let me show you what Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer had to say about the two bills. Then I want to talk to you about eviction protections. Madam President, well, as we all know, Last night, the Senate voted by a substantial margin to move forward with a debate on a bipartisan infrastructure bill. I want to commend the group of senators who worked with President Biden to reach a deal. The agreement will ultimately dedicate over a trillion dollars to strengthening virtually every major category of our country's physical infrastructure. The vote last night also means that the Senate is on track to reach the two-track goal I laid out for this chamber at the beginning of the month. The first track is the bipartisan bill focused on traditional brick-and-mortar infrastructure projects. The second track is a budget reconciliation bill where Democrats will make historic investments in American jobs, American families, and efforts to fight climate change. In order to start work on a reconciliation bill, the Senate must pass a budget resolution first, and we are on track for that as well. It's been my goal to pass both a bipartisan infrastructure bill and a budget resolution during this work period. Some pundits have called that a tall order. I understand that. But because of the vote last night, the Senate is now moving forward with the bipartisan infrastructure bill and we are on track to pass both elements of the two-track strategy before we adjourn for August recess. It took some prodding and a few deadlines, but it all has worked out for the better. So as you can see, he's also optimistic in getting things done before the August recess. So we'll see what happens next week. It will be a very big week for sure in Congress. Now, the federal eviction ban is about to expire and House Democrats are trying to pass a bill to extend it until the end of this year. This came as a request from President Biden and Jen Psaki, the House press secretary, said 
Given the recent spread of the Delta variant, including among those Americans both most likely to face evictions and lacking vaccinations, President Biden would have strongly supported a decision by the CDC to further extend this eviction moratorium to protect renters at this moment of heightened vulnerability. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court has made clear that this option is no longer available. So the Supreme Court already ruled against this and now something has to happen through Congress. And Nancy Pelosi said that we in Congress have the opportunity and the responsibility to respect the dignity of those who have suffered so much in terms of their health, financial security, and well-being. And she called the eviction extension as a moral imperative. So it looks like they will try to get this bill on the House floor today and we'll see where it goes from there. So that's all I have for you in today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you. I appreciate every single one of you. Please hit the like button on the video. Share this video with your friends and family and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also click that notifications bell to be notified that whenever I publish new videos and new content for you. Also get your free stock from Robinhood just by opening an account using the link in the description below. You don't need to deposit anything or do anything to get the free stock. And make sure to check the link for the Yada savings account. It's a savings account that is FDIC insured but gives you interest with a lottery system. If you use the link below, you'll get 100 tickets when you deposit as little as $25 for a chance to win up to $10 million. Then you'll get a weekly ticket for every $25 you deposit. Finally, don't forget to get your free stocks from Webull when you deposit only $100, which is just like cash. You can take it out anytime you feel like it. All the links are in the description below. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.